to our dear colleague, to our dear colleague who lost her son to gun violence. May God bless and understand that your points hit home with respect to making sure that each and every child has an opportunity to succeed and to meet his or her potential. We can agree on the issue, but have differing perspectives on the solutions. With all due respect, I think a solution, as do many across the Commonwealth, that to save lives is not just one approach. Well over 50% of the budget for the school district in Philadelphia is funded by state tax dollars. In addition, we have done specific taxes, including a cigarette tax, for the city of Philadelphia school district alone. The city of Philadelphia school district has amongst 200,000 students over 60,000 in charter schools. Go to see Boys Latin School. Go to see what backgrounds they're from. Go to see how they dress up and how it's changing their lives with 96% graduation rates and how many buses they have to take to get there. And let me name these schools, if I might. Independence Mission Schools, where the people who are running these schools only care about the students who live in the neighborhoods from which they serve. St. Raymond of Penafort, Holy Cross, the DePaul Catholic School, St. Helena Incarnation, St. Martin of Tours, St. Veronica, St. Martin de Porres, St. Malachy, Our Mother of Sorrow, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Francis Cabrini, St. Rose of Lima, St. Cyril of Alexandria, St. Barnabas, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Gabriel, and guess what? The vast majority of them are not Catholic. Discriminatory, how outrageous. For people who care about educating children of all backgrounds and to provide them a safe haven and to, to, to just dismiss them as discriminatory. To act as if these good individuals don't care about each and every child in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I'm sorry, one size does not fit all. Period. And the notion that we are not meeting our obligations with respect to public schools when we have record levels of investment, because guess what? I'm here debate after debate year after year with respect to public school funding, and it's never been enough. That's what we hear every year with record increases in basic education funding, special education funding, Social Security funding, public school employees retirement funding, which goes directly to teachers, public school teachers, for benefits and salaries. 75% of every school district's budget is at least salaries and benefits. EITC and OSTC to combine to my good friend from Philadelphia County, combined for one and a half percent of what we spend across the board on public education K through 12, which will reach 13 billion state tax dollars and taxes that are collected on a local level because we have a, a, a system that is designed to collect taxes on a state level, which gets shared around and for which we subsidize many school districts and we collect on a local level based on state law because we think people should contribute to their own school districts and their local communities. That's another $16 billion. 
That's about $29, $30 billion that we spend on public education through people's hard-earned tax dollars. If you take the $110 million in EITC up to $210 million, it's less, far less than 1%. It's about 5%. I mean, it's about 0.5%. 0.5%. Please, if I might have the opportunity to speak without being interrupted. Now, I also heard the notion that the increase, the idea is, is that when we put up House Bill 59 to say maybe you should contribute if you're making over $250,000 a month to contribute to certain items under human services, it was resoundingly defeated because $250,000 was middle class. 50,000 when this was created, taking it up to a number at the rate of inflation is just shy of that number of 95,000. It's shy of that. But it's certainly not at the number of 250,000 that everybody said was middle class when that debate was going on. It seems very relative depending on the argument. The idea behind the Educational Improvement Tax Credit is, is that it can be spread all across Pennsylvania, not just in particular neighborhoods, but that it can be available across Pennsylvania for families that understand that maybe one size does not fit all. Oh, but I guess it's de rigueur to just poo-poo those folks, that maybe they just don't know better than the rest of us. Maybe they ought to be enlightened and understand that there's only one monopolistic school system that should be allowed in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania or in the United States of America. Oh, there's freedom. Because that's where the ideological divide is coming to, let's be honest that you can only have a state-run education system and that the notion that there should be any level of competition should be thrown out the window. As I said, in the last four budgets that we voted upon where we've increased to record levels of public education, including, by the way, the $2.5 billion we're spending on teachers' pensions, I voted for each and every one of them. Each and every one of them. I'll vote for the budget again this year. And when we're talking about finally, finally, after all these years since the 2008 recession, having a robust economy, finally, 5.5% increase in PIT numbers and 7.6% in sales numbers, there ought to be some respect which we have not shown for some opportunity in the arena of school choice because we're going to continue to show the respect for the, the essence of public education. I said it yesterday and I'll repeat it again today. My dad was a public school teacher and my brother's a public school teacher. And the public school teachers I've encountered have been outstanding. But I have also encountered many retired public school teachers who has a point of mission, a point of giving of themselves to others, have gone on to teach or be administrators in Catholic schools, Christian schools, Jewish schools, and non-denominational schools. Why? Because they recognize that for certain people there's a special mission there and they want to help. And they are certainly good people. Exceptional people. Now, when the bill was introduced, there were quite a few Democratic co-sponsors. Quite a few. I hope you stay the course. Because you recognize in your neighborhoods, you recognize in your neighborhoods, when some of those schools are struggling to stay open, like this, this isn't, you know, the schools we're talking about aren't the big 
prep schools, but it's these neighborhood schools that are struggling to stay open, well over 50% of their students are getting something, not a full, not a full scholarship, something to help their parents keep them in that school. They just might like a uniform. They just might love giving their son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter a big hug, knowing that maybe they're going to talk about some values because for them that actually matters. For them that might be preeminent. Talk about discriminatory that there can't be other options in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that we support, please vote yes on House Bid 800 if you stand for public education and for a few options. Thank you.